Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Um, back in June, I posted a video on my channel called Falling in Love at 54. Uh, you've probably seen it if you're watching this video now. And so you may recall that on my birthday in the beginning of June, I met like the most fantastic woman I've ever met. And we started dating almost immediately and it was awesome. I fell in love with her on so many different levels uh, and I found it impossible not to frankly she's pretty much everything I've ever looked for in a woman she's got the brain she's got the humor she's got the ambition she's got the looks she's got the most exquisite personality you know um, I, I, I dig her on every level and she dug me and we had a fantastic summer together. It was great. And um, unfortunately, in the, the beginning of September, it all sort of unraveled to, for several reasons, which all emanate from a single misunderstanding. So even though everything was uh, going great between us and getting stronger, um, for reasons I won't divulge out of courtesy, um, we ended up calling it off and I've been broken hearted ever since. Uh, all my life I've said that I'd rather have a broken leg than a broken heart because you know relatively speaking um, even though the pain initially from a broken leg might be more acute than the initial pain from a broken heart. The fact is that you know relatively speaking that your leg is going to heal and you can put a sort of time frame on how long that healing process is going to take and then once it's healed you know that it will be pretty much as good as new again if everything goes the way it's supposed to anyway with the broken heart there's no such uh, assurances you know it's going to last as long as it's going to last and unfortunately I've been broken hearted so many times in my life that I'm actually used to it I know the whole process, I know everything I'm going to go through. The only thing I don't know is the length of the process um, in terms of how long it hurts. Because my attitude towards it is not to fight the pain. My attitude towards uh, sadness is if you feel sad, go ahead and cry. Because if you bottle feelings like that up, they tend to come out in more destructive ways than tears. So I allow myself to cry if I feel sad. The problem is that I feel sad every day at some point when I think about this issue. And so, yeah, literally I've been crying every day oh, for a few minutes every day, like since the beginning of September, almost three months now. And um, yeah, there's no end in sight for that. And that's kind of depressing because I find crying quite annoying. I don't really like crying. I'd kind of rather bleed than cry, but at the same time, uh, it is what it is and like I say I'm not going to deny my real feelings uh, the quickest way to process these feelings is to express them that's how I feel that's how I that's what I've learned uh, through being brokenhearted so many times before and um, getting back to my process of mourning or grief uh, in September uh, was when it all, the first sort of 10 days of September uh, was when it all came crashing down and then so I spent pretty much the whole month of September in that sort of state of shocked disbelief that something that was so great could just end for what to me seemed like um, not a really good enough reason to end it since it was so amazing but uh, you know it is what it is in October and November I was considerably more depressed, sad, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, sadness is a, a, in this case is an emotional thing. I, I, I'm only sad on an emotional level, I know that might sound stupid because you think, well, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that I'm not necessarily happy with the rest of my life, and this is kind of uh, something I think sometimes people get in a contradiction about, they think, well, you can't be happy and sad at the same time. I disagree. Sadness is an emotion. Happiness can be a state of being. And generally speaking, uh, you know, every single day I, I um, to coin a phrase, I count my blessings because, you know, I'm surrounded by people that care about me. I've got food, shelter, great job. Great job insofar as it's steady and makes me the money I need to survive. Um, 
you know, I've got plenty of things to look forward to in the future. Relatively speaking, I've got my health, you know, and because of all those things, you know, I'm glad to be here on this earth. I, 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 I enjoy my life to the best of my ability, but that doesn't mean that it, uh, there won't be moments uh, throughout my day and, or whatever that uh, I, I feel incredibly sad. Um, and I've lost so much more than just a lover and someone to go on dates with because one of the things I've learned going through this process of grief um, is this. You know, I spent, my second marriage ended in 2005 and I spent most of the last 10 years single. I mean, I did have a relationship which spanned the summer of 2011 to 2013. Um, but because uh, she didn't treat me very well, she didn't really trust me. And I won't maintain a relationship where trust is at issue so I had to leave um, so anyways most of the time for the past 10 years I've been single and I had to come to terms a long time ago with the possibility that that would just be the way my life would end I would just be on my own and so therefore you have to program yourself to have some self-esteem to love yourself despite being on your own you know you need to be able you, you need to be able to develop a frame of mind which does not depend on outside validation to make you feel good about yourself and that's something I've been cultivating my whole life to a certain degree but most especially since the end of my second marriage and so I mean you all know me as well I, I, I've got that little streak of narcissism where you know I just I, I think I'm pretty okay with myself and and I like who I am and and so on but what this relationship taught me or reminded me of because I already knew this about myself but because it's been such a long time since I was really in the kind of relationship that was so rewarding um, I forgot something about myself which is this you know I'm by nature a, a, a very generous giving person and that's most especially true when I'm romantically involved I'm an extremely romantic partner and um, that spans you know uh, tiny gestures to um, you know just showing how much you care to you know passionate sex all that stuff it's all put together I don't just mean romance in in, in, in one f sense or one form I mean just in every the, every the way I approach the relationship is from that sort of perspective and I really didn't realize how much of myself I'm denying expression of when I don't have that in my life. When I had it, and I had it so perfectly this summer, and the reason I say I had it so perfectly is because she absolutely recognized and appreciated all the, even the little tiny things that I didn't said. She got it, man. She saw where it was coming from. She understood it. She appreciated it. And that's something that's, for me, very rare because, you know, about 90% of the kindness that I exhibit in my life just seems to go by unnoticed. So um, for someone to actually sort of really recognize and appreciate it was really special to me and made me feel even better about being that way because that is who I am. That's what I'm all about. And now that I don't have someone in my life to cherish and to adore, I really realize that there's a huge aspect of me that uh, is missing that I don't have any any means to express so well yeah I mean having a partner is is very it's really it is always nice to have that person who you admire so much who gives you outside validation as well because I had become more or less independent of that need I neglected the side of myself that likes to give that validation to other people. I haven't really realized just how important that was to me until you, they say you, you never know what you've got until it's gone. And this is what I've been reminded about myself. And this is why I hope that at some point in the future she and I can reconcile. Because I can say for sure that. Uh, it's extremely unlikely that I'll ever meet someone that I have so much in common with that I gel so well with and who makes me feel the way she made me feel I hadn't felt like that since I was a young man in the 80s so it was pretty amazing and I'm still sad about it being gone 
but uh, we are still in contact as far as I contact her. I write her letters. Um, you know, when a woman tells me that she needs space, I want to give her some space. So, um, you know, I don't text message her or email her or call her on the phone. But every once in a while, I'll send her a letter in the post. And I know she appreciates them because she's let me know that much. Um, and it's just important to me that, you know, she knows that I'm, I don't hold a grudge and that um, I'm still here. And, you know, if she should ever change her mind, you know, I'm not mad at her and I don't want anything but our mutual happiness, whatever that means. And, of course, ideally to me, that would mean a enduring romantic relationship but it might turn out in the long run to mean an enduring friendship. But for me, that would be pretty hard because to be a real friend to someone, you have to be happy if they find someone that they fall in love with. And in her case, I'm not so sure I really could genuinely be happy for her if she found that with someone other than me. So we'll see what we see. But I don't... Um, I don't give up hope, people, and I don't let the failure of this relationship um, infect how I see myself on some levels. I mean, in the past when I've had breakups, sometimes I, the, I re-examine everything I did and all the mistakes I might have made which led to the breakup and then I'll, I'll basically develop a hang-up about it and think, oh, I won't be like X, you know, I won't do this in the future the next time I meet someone and blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, you can't really let yourself think like that. I've had so much experience with breakups now that um, I realize that that's a mistake because every single person that you're going to get with is different and you're going to be different with every single person because they're different. So you can't necessarily apply the rules that you applied or, 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 or think that the lessons you learned from one mistake uh, might necessarily work um, when you carry them forward. I mean, sometimes they will, but uh, just don't get yourself hung up on it, you know. Um, take every relationship as it comes on its own merits and try very hard not to judge the present by the past. There's some advice for you for free. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I look forward to any comments, questions down below, but I'm not going to be divulging any real personal information about this other person because I have too much respect for her to do that. And uh, hopefully though I've given enough information to where we can have a decent conversation. I'm on The Breakfast Club tomorrow, which is Monday, of course. That's my day over there. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to that channel if you're not already subscribed. Can't imagine why you wouldn't be, but please do subscribe if you're not. Until next time, people, thanks for watching, and may all your ups and downs be ups.